So let's quickly go over friction. So what is friction? Friction is a force, right? So it's as a unit is Newton. Let's put, put that down. So friction is a force that, that resisting uh, the motion. So object in motion slow down because of friction. So let's dive in. Let's uh, let's see. Let's start with the quiz. I have three different objects. Let's say a cone. Uh, so the cone has a radius. Cone has a radius. Cone has a height and the length. So the cone surface area, surface area. Try to figure it out. I have a rectangular prism and rectangular piece of uh, surface area also try to find it out and I have I don't know a sphere surface area what are we uh, why are we trying to involve surface area with this because this cone is at rest you want to move it this rectangular prism at rest you want to move it this is sphere at rest you want to move it the mass of this one is uh, for let's Put the put the newton. So force is four point eight newton. Force is four point eight newton. Force is also four point eight newton. Okay. So surface area is uh, now your main job is to move them. All right. So you want to move this object, right? You want to move this object, and you want to also move this object. Okay, which one would be most difficult to move, right? Another way of saying which one has more friction, right? Which one you need to apply more net force to move, right? So let's first think about the surface area. This one has probably more surface area because this is uh, length, width, uh, height. So LW plus WH plus HL. This one surface area, this is surface area, though. So this one surface area would be what? Pi r uh, r plus h square plus l square, and this one for pi r square. So surface area. So you see the surface area, they are not the same. So you probably think this one would be easier to move. Why is that? Because less surface area that means less force you have to apply because less friction okay let's see uh, whether that's true first find the mass of this one what is the mass 4.8 divided by 10 is 0 0.48 uh, well let's use acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second is squared negative let's say this is uranoot Okay, so now let's see um, what is the mass. Mass is, as you know, that to find the mass, you have to write Fg acceleration. So what is Fg? Fg is 4.8 Newton, and acceleration is 4.8 divided by 9.81, and that would be 0 0.489. Uh, 9.81, 0 0.489, right? 0 0.489. Okay, so mass is 0 0.489 kilogram. So mass of this one is also 0 0.489 kilogram. Mass of this one is also 0 0.489 kilogram. So let's find the force of this one. Force of this one is, of course, 4.8 Newton. Uh, force due to gravity. Force due to gravity is zero. Uh, Fn Fg is 4.8 Newton. Fg is 4.8 Newton. That's force due to gravity. Let's find normal force. The box is not moving up and down. The rectangular prism doesn't move being up and down. So it is equal in magnitude opposite in direction. We forgot to put we forgot to put a negative sign. So this is equal in magnitude opposite in direction. Uh, negative four point eight newton. Four point eight newton. Fn is four point eight newton. Okay, now let's find FF. 
f of what? S. So mu as fn. Mu as is 0 0.4 and fn is uh, 4.8. So 4.8 times 0.4 is 1.92. So this is 1.92 Newton. So FFS is 1.92 Newton. So FFS is 1.92 Newton. And this is 1.92 Newton. Okay, now let's do the last one. FFK. Mu K Fn. What is mu K? 0 0.3, 4.8. 4.8 .8 times 0 0.3 is 1.44. So you have 1.44 Newton. 1.44 Newton. Okay, objective rest is friction doesn't depend on surface area. Object in motion is friction doesn't depend on surface area. So what is friction depends on? Okay, so that's a good question. We rejected our hypothesis. Our hypothesis was uh, if you increase the surface area, force of friction increases. That's why you have to apply more net force and that is net. Now let's see whether experiment proved that. Take a look. This give us 4.78 Newton. Now, how many kilograms in 4.78 Newton? Well, my calculator here is telling me if I divide 4.78 by 9.81 meters per second squared, I get that there are 0 0.488 kilograms. I'm going to put it on a scale because that's, that's correct. What is the mass of this wood? 0.488 kilograms. And what is the weight of this wood? Uh, 4.78 newtons. Okay, now, what would be the different way we can test our hypothesis? Now, don't forget, our hypothesis is if you increase the surface area, the force of friction also increases, meaning that it would be easier to move the sphere than it would be easier to move the rectangle. Remember, the rectangle made of wood, the sphere also made of wood, wood and wood. Now, how can you test this hypothesis? Well, the thing is, the sphere is a little bit prob problematic because it only makes tangential contact with the ramp, meaning they're not really rubbing it. No, we're just going to use the rectangular prism. How can yeah, we use that? That's exactly why you want to only use the rectangular prism, because it's always going to be sliding. So how can we use differently? How can we use rectangular prism differently so we can test our hypothesis? Well, the rectangular prism doesn't have the same surface area on each of its faces, meaning if you turn it one way, then hypothetically it should have a different friction force on it than if you turn it a different direction. So you mean one face will give you a smaller surface area than the another face, right? Mm -hmm. So that means the bigger face is supposed to, you're supposed to apply more net force to move it because the friction will increase because friction is proportional to surface area, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so let's test it out. Isaac, can you explain based on your observation? All right. So it looks like in both of these cases, we required exactly one Newton of force in to order move to it, move it. To move it? Yeah. In at order a to. Constant, uh, constant velocity, right? Yeah. So in order to overpower the force of friction, which means that both of them have the same coefficient of friction no matter what. In other words, no matter if you turn or, or twist an object, no matter what, then the surface that it is standing on, its own coefficient of friction will not be affected. Or in other words, friction is not affected by surface area. Our experiment also agree with our math. We reject this hypothesis. What is the hypothesis? Surface area go up, friction go up. This is wrong. This is bad. So what is that friction depends on? So friction. Friction force. Friction force. Friction force uh, is the notation is this, and it has SI unit Newton. There are two types: the static friction, kinetic friction. Static friction, FFS 
generic friction F and K. Friction, force of friction depends on two things. Uh, well, let's see. If mass go up, then weight go up, then force of friction go up. Why is that? Because force of friction is new Fn. If mass go up, then the weight go up, so that normal force also go up. Okay. If normal force go up, then friction also go up. Therefore, if mass go up, friction go up. Because mass go up, weight go up, normal force go up. If normal force go up, friction go up. This friction is proportional to normal force. Friction is proportional to normal force. Okay, good. Okay, so mass go up, friction go up. What else? What else is friction depend on? Okay, we're going to come back to this. Let's take a look at the coefficient of friction. Friction. Coefficient of friction, there is a notation. And the SI unit is no SI unit. Why is that? Let's say FA, FF. This is slope. Slope has a name, mu. And mu has a ratio, delta y, delta x. Delta y is in Newton. Delta x is in Newton. So, coefficient of friction has no SI unit. There are two types of coefficient of friction, mu s, mu k. Mu s is always bigger than mu k. Over here, f f s is always bigger than f f k. Why is that? Because f f s has to overcome two things, inertia and interlock. Okay, and F, F, K has less interlock. It has to overcome less interlock. Therefore, F, F, K is smaller than F, F, S. This do doesn't depend on mass. Okay, just because I have a bigger, if I take a bigger root, the coefficient of friction is still going to be the same. If I take a different root, this root coefficient of friction is 0 0.3, mu k is 0 0.3, mu k is 0 0.3, mu s 0 0.4, mu s 0 0.4. So changing the size, changing the mass, although they have a different mass, uh, you're not going to have the different coefficient of friction. Okay, so that part is taken care of. Now, we're going to prove that why the uh, inertia and interlock. So, uh, this object, if you look at the reference table, page number three, this object is made of matter. If you break down the matter, then you see what? Hadrons and leptons. Leptons is uh, like most famous leptons is electron. If you break down hadrons, you see baryons and mesons. If you break down baryons, you see quark. So, this quark, okay, when you put this object over here, right, what happened? The, the the matter the 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 atoms here the atoms over here quark here quark over here when object is rest they have more time for the atoms to make interlock between surface number one to surface number two so that's why when you go to a go to shop something at a at a grocery store right. If you put loss of grocery in the shopping cart, then what happened? In the beginning, you cannot, if you apply 0 Newton, it doesn't move. If you apply 10 Newton, it doesn't move. If you apply 20 Newton, it doesn't move. So you ask your sibling to help you out. So when your sibling help you out, your sibling also push it, then it started moving. And then when it started moving, then you can ask your sibling uh, to remove the support. Even after removing support, you can keep moving because then 
object in motion do not have enough time to make interlock between the both surface. They do interlock, but not every atom should be able to interlock with the both surfaces. This surface made of atoms, this surface made of atoms, when they are rest, they have forever to make this interlock. So, in the beginning, it takes more uh, force to what? Uh, to make it moving. All right, that's the number one. Number two is the inertia. What is inertia? Object at rest like twist at rest. What is another way of saying that? Object at rest, okay, or object even in motion. Object resist to change its behavior, okay. This object behavior is what? It likes to be at rest. Why? This is already at rest. So to change its behavior, you have to apply force. Then it's going to apply force to the opposite direction to cancel the applied force because object at rest like to stay at rest. So inertia and interlock. Inertia, once you overcome the inertia, object is moving. Object in motion like to stay in motion forever.